Hello Max Tubers, welcome back to my channel. Today we are about to check out a video of Dimash performing the song Unforgettable Day. You all were telling me to watch this unforgettable performance from his Gaku concert where he hit one of his highest notes, a D8 to be exact. So that's making me really, really excited. Because the highest note I've heard from him so far um, was from his duet with Li Yukang, a note in the seventh octave, which is already more than impressive. But before we dive into the video, I am once again inviting everyone to follow me on my Instagram account at Max underscore Q. And please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, click on the notification bell, watch and comment on my videos here in Max Tube. Since the original video is from a TV network, I need to alter it a bit to avoid potential copyright issues, which may cause this video to be blocked in selected territories, which has already happened to me a few times, by the way. This is a precautionary measure that I need to take, so I hope you guys understand. To those who wish to enjoy the full video without any interruption, without my comments, without any alteration, please feel free to check out my description box and I'll put the original video link there. Because as always, I will be pausing the video in between to give my honest observations and comments. Another option is you can watch the original video first before coming back to this one for my honest observations. Again, if you are looking for the original video, this is not it. Өзіңе еркелеген балдай тәтті сөзіңе this is my first time to listen to this song, but I did make some research on the lyrics and I stumbled upon uh, the Facebook page Dimash Could I Be Again Europe. Not sure though how accurate the English translation is. Nonetheless, I am using this translation as my guide. <laughs> I love how dramatic the music is and how soft and tender his voice sounds. Very light, yet very heartfelt. And I can't help but feel that there is a sadness in his voice and in his eyes. <laughs> This is why the interpretation of a song is so important. For instance, as I'm reading the English translation while he is singing, it shouldn't sound that sad since he is merely describing how he fell in love with this person, how this person made him feel. But with his interpretation, it almost feels like he's reminiscing the good old days, 
that this person is no longer with him. Not sure if I'm getting it right, but that's what I'm feeling from him. I'm not sure if it's just my imagination or am I really hearing someone uh, doing the backup vocals which is one octave lower than Dimash, which sounds good. It's actually a very simple way of layering the voices, but it just supported the lead vocals so well. His voice sounded um, very sweet. I know it's not a typical description that we use to describe a male voice, but it just sounded really sweet and pure. There is an innocence in his delivery. Again, to those who do not like a lot of pauses like what I'm doing right now, Please check out the original video link in my description box, okay? Please don't say I didn't remind you. One of the things that impresses me, uh, even as he is doing the relatively uh, relaxed parts of the song, is his ability to keep things sounding interesting. He is the only person I know so far who can give us um, intricate layers of intensities, if it makes sense. For example, if other singers can deliver uh, intensities from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 5. He is the only one I know who can do an intensity 1.5, 2.5, not just jump from 1 to 2. He can access those in-between levels of intensity. It's actually very complicated, so complicated that I'm not even sure if I'm explaining them clearly for you guys. Let's just keep going. <laughs> If you noticed, his tone changed when he started singing the second uh, part of the song after the first chorus. Um, he sounds stronger, but he still sounds soft and light, which is an unusual mix that not everyone can achieve. Because of this, he is still able to deliver the same emotional feels um, but he never sounds monotonous. Moving on. <laughs> this is one of my favorite tones in his voice which is absolutely wonderful. Strong, open, and solid, with no strain at all. For me, it's pure gold. Let's get back to the clip. I 
I've said this in the past, with the different colors and textures of his voice, it almost sounds like different people coming together to sing one song. And he is the only person who can do this, as far as I know, again, without sounding weird. There is no unpleasant disconnect when he does uh, all these different colors and different tones in his voice. It's a vocal style uniquely his. He is always so into the song whenever he performs that he loses himself in the process, in a good way, of course. Um, even during the instrumentals, you can see that he never breaks character, which is part of his appeal. Like, you want to keep your eyes on him all the time because if you take your eyes off him even for a split second it's like you're going to miss out on something <laughs> Just watching him do what he does and understanding how complicated his songs are, I really cannot understand how he does everything so perfectly. Let's not even talk about how bright his voice sounded, how strong it was, his technical proficiency, which is absolutely insane. It's already a given. But just the expression alone is to die for. We can hear his feelings um, starting to overpower his entire being. That is beyond good. I'm running out of adjectives to describe how superb his technique is. Mind you, we haven't even gotten to the eight octave that everyone has been talking about. But if you ask me, even if he doesn't go there, I'm good. I'm already beyond satisfied, contented with his rendition. But let's keep things going. Superhead voice, check. So, I guess the D8 that you guys have been telling me about this performance is just around the corner. Fingers crossed. Honestly, I don't even know what a D8 sounds like. I've never heard one before. <laughs> So that's what a D8 sounds like. Whoa. Okay, if that D8 itself wasn't impressive enough, it was actually a very strong, solid, and piercing D8. It wasn't airy, it wasn't breathy, it wasn't weak like a lot of other whistles we've heard from other singers. So I got to listen to that again.
Now you guys really have to enlighten me. Is there even a D8 on the piano? Well, for sure, not in our old piano, but does the new ones have a D8? Please tell me down below because I really do not know. How is that even humanly possible, especially from a male singer, a male voice? Well, one thing I know is that not everything can be explained when it comes to the mash. I will definitely replay this part over and over again after filming this. One of the things I noticed about Dimash when he performs is that um, you'll never know where he's taking you in a song until you're there. I mean, if I wasn't given a heads up regarding this D8, this much talked about D8, I wouldn't have expected him to go there. In fact, a lot of his ad-libs prior to that D8 was quite unexpected. As usual, Dimash giving his listeners another unbelievably superb performance. If I am in such awe watching him on YouTube, I just cannot imagine how it feels like to watch him live in person. It must be an indescribable experience. By the way, is it true that Dimash actually co-wrote this song? Because that's what I read uh, somewhere in my comment section in one of my other Dimash videos. So please confirm this down below. Because if it's true, oh my, then this guy really has it all. He has the voice, the presence, the looks, and he can write songs. The total package. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Thank you all for tuning in. And please don't forget to hit subscribe, click on the notification bell, watch and comment on my videos here in MaxQ. Stay safe, happy and healthy everyone. Take care.